Yeah. Boom. There we Boom. Go. We are live. Welcome, everybody, to Dave and Johnny Live. I'm Dave, which obviously would make him Johnny. Hi, Johnny. How's it going? I'm good. How's everybody doing? Checking in on the YouTube show every Friday afternoon here. If you're listening to the podcast version of this show, which is available on our website, ringsidereport.net, um, you can watch this show live Friday afternoons around uh, noon Eastern time. Sometime between noon and, and noon 30 is kind of how we do it, right? Like Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, 12 and 12.30 Eastern time, New York time, Montreal time, you know. So that means for Ireland, it's pretty much like 5.30-ish? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for our buddy Wally out there in Ireland, it's like uh, 5 p.m. You know, you, you figure it out. You understand the times. If you're listening to this on the podcast, if you're watching live, hello. Welcome to the show. Um, what do we got for him, Johnny Norse? SummerSlam's coming up on Sunday. Is everybody excited for SummerSlam? I'm excited for potential matches. Seven hours, not so much, but we've lived this last two years, SummerSlam, seven hours. So I've kind of gotten used to it by now. Also, these marathon pay-per-views, Survivor Series has been like this for two years. WrestleMania now, so eh, just get used to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a long night on Sunday, right? It's going to be long. Of course, past midnight for sure. But... You know, I there are matches that I'm excited about. There are things that I want to see at SummerSlam. Daniel Bryan and The Miz, those video packages that they did on SmackDown, I thought they were excellent. I thought they were really good, told a really good story. We know the story of Daniel Bryan and The Miz, and I'm excited to see what they do in that match. I want Daniel Bryan to just obliterate The Miz. I, I still feel this might be the opening match on the card, though. Even though they hype it as the match for SmackDown, to me, it just seems like you want to get the crowd going hot right away. That's the kind of match that would do it. I I feel, I know you said Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler could do it, but because there's a lot of outside interference with that, I feel that might be a screwy finish. With Miz, Daniel Bryan, I think that's just going to be straight up, Daniel Bryan wins. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense. Um, If... This is only one match, you know. If this is going to be a one-match feud, it would make sense for Brian to just go over here and win. But if it's going to go on for a couple of pay-per-views, I could see Miz winning with some sort of screwy finish. I'm not convinced that Daniel Bryan's winning on Sunday. Wow. Kind of surprised. I, I'd like to be convinced. I'll be happy when he does, you know. But I could see them uh, dragging this out for a little bit and have Daniel Bryan not win the first encounter. He did lose the last pay-per-view. So you think he's going to lose again? Oh, that's true. It was kind of a weird deal there, right? Teaming up with Kane against Harper and Rowan. And he ate the pin. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he'll lose. Um, but I think if he loses, like, Miz cheats to win. Like, he's not going to lose right. clean to the Miz. I don't see that happening. But I could see the Miz doing something where he either has his feet on the ropes during a pinfall or, you know, a handful of tights or he takes a buckle off and Brian bumps into the exposed turnbuckle and, you know, like, not anything too outrageous. Not like a low blow while the referee's not looking or interference or anything like that but i could see you know a little bit of a cheat from the miz to help him beat daniel bryan i I could see them going that way and i wouldn't be i wouldn't be upset about that well time will tell right yeah we're getting some comments rolling in on the youtube live here michael dupree says dean ambrose definitely turning on rollins saw ambrose come back this week and he agrees with me. He thinks that uh, this is going to go on for a few pay-per-views and there's going to be some sort of screwy finish between Miz and Daniel Bryan. He thinks it's going to keep going until WrestleMania. 
I don't really want to see it going up until WrestleMania, but uh, I think that this will be the first in a series of matches between these two. Well, you have 13 matches scheduled for this Sunday, possibly more. We never know. You can only use the screwy finish so many times. So do you use it here, or are you going to use it in AJ versus Samoa Joe, which is likely going to be another match for another pay-per-view as well? I mean, you can do a clean finish and still do another match. Yeah. Uh, really? With what? Brian going over? Yeah, Brian goes over, but The Miz is like, well, you cheated anyways. Even though he clearly didn't cheat, but The Miz can just make excuses. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I mean, to me, Brian winning here would just kind of end the whole deal. It would be like, all right, that's it. What more can you do? No, you'd be surprised. I actually wouldn't be surprised. They've done this before where it's like, Big Cass, Daniel Bryan, that should have been one match. You said it should have been one match, and it got two matches. And then he was fired. And he was fired, yeah. Yeah. And yet, we always thought, like, there's a chance Big Cass might win. Even though he was on the verge of getting fired, he still thought he might beat Daniel Bryan. Yeah, I I think it would be good to see Bryan win this match. I think that's the best course of action. Bryan beats Miz, we move on. And Brian goes on to bigger and better things and more exciting opponents. Because as good as this feud is, as good as the story is, it's being told, bottom line is, in the ring, The Miz just doesn't cut the mustard. The Miz isn't a top-flight talent like Daniel Bryan. There are other guys on SmackDown that I would prefer see in the ring against Daniel Bryan. Nakamura, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, that main event level. That's where I'd rather see Daniel Bryan than this feud with The Miz, which is being treated very well. Like They're showing it a lot on SmackDown, a lot of video packages, a lot of you know promo segments, but it's not for the WWE Championship. And I'd like to see Daniel Bryan step up, you know? I want to see Bryan versus AJ. Well, it's like you said, there's a lot of better matches for Daniel Bryan on SmackDown. This could just be one done, and that's fine. They built it up. They put on a huge pay-per-view. That's all you really need to do. You don't need to do, you know, two other pay-per-views where we get the classic trilogy, like, war. We don't need that, really. We just need the one match. That's it. I mean, you've seen... This past week, the bill for the last eight years is better than the bill we've seen in the last month. Yeah, it's been uh, very good. So do we really need another month where it's like, oh, the bill kind of sucks, but let's just get through this match? No, let's just move on, actually. Well, then what do you do with The Miz, John? What about The Miz? They always find something for The Miz, so I'm not really worried about that. He's still got his talk show. He still does his thing. He'll still be around. He's still one of the top heels on SmackDown. Uh, We have a comment here from Antonio Bam Bam who says uh, he agrees with us regarding The Miz, but unfortunately he thinks Vince McMahon will put The Miz over here and the feud will drag to the Rumble. So we have one guy saying that he thinks the feud will drag to WrestleMania. Another guy saying he thinks it will drag to at least January at the Royal Rumble. And you're saying that you think it's going to be over here in August at SummerSlam. And by September, Daniel Bryan will be on to bigger and better things. And I'm not so sure. I think that we see this go on till uh, I don't know, maybe October, you know. Maybe one more match, maybe two more matches. But I wouldn't be surprised to see this drag on a little bit past this. I still think we're going to get what we wanted for a while. Daniel Bryan's going to beat the crap out of The Miz. They've been building towards that. And Daniel Bryan's been fighting just to get that. I think they're finally going to deliver this Sunday. I hope so. I hope the match delivers. I really want to see Daniel Bryan beat the hell out of The Miz. Like, I just want to see a Brock Lesnar-style beating from Daniel Bryan delivered upon The Miz. Oh, he'll throw him around a bit. I don't know if it's going to be like, you know, Suplex City style. Vicious. Like, you know when Brock, a couple years ago at SummerSlam 
was on top of Randy and then hit him with those elbows and Randy's face was all gushing blood. I want to see Daniel Bryan do that to Miz. That's what I want to see this Sunday at SummerSlam. I think he's going to out-wrestle him, which won't be that hard. And he's going to torture him. It's not, it's not going to be brutal. It's just going to be humiliating, I think. Yeah. I want to see the Miz embarrassed. That Daniel Bryan promo at the end where he's like, this Sunday, I'm going to punch Miz in the face, and I'm finally going to shut him up. I was like, yes, Daniel Bryan. Kill him. Kill Miz. I really uh, I got excited about that. I loved it. Such a Daniel Bryan fan. He's so great. I hope he smashes him to pieces. You know, it, it might be one of the later matches if it gets that violent. I just I don't expect it to get that violent, but wait and see. Remember, John Cena started a SummerSlam. What do you mean? Him and Baron Corbin? I believe that was the opening match at SummerSlam. Really? I believe so. Last if, year? If not last year, the year before, I think. Wow. That's interesting. I don't know if this will open SummerSlam. I think this is too big of a match. I think you probably do uh, maybe New Day opening the show. They're always a good opener against the Bludgeons for the SmackDown tag titles. Yeah, that's all right. It's not bad. New Day is always good to get the crowd going to start a show. Yeah, they're very good. One of the best acts in WWE, consistent, without question. How about Brock Lesnar opens the show? Let's get that over with right away. Yeah, but that would defeat the purpose of that Money in the Bank contract match. Correct. So that's not going to happen, obviously. <laughs> if anything, you're just saying that Money in the Bank match might start the show now. Braun Strowman opening the show would make a lot of sense. He is over big time. People love him. And when he comes out, the crowd goes nuts. It would be a good way to start the show. Yeah, I agree. I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I, I don't think there's really a wrong choice in this matter. Just probably not the tag team title match. Not uh, the B team versus the Revival. But that's going to be on the pre-show. So Yeah, that'll be on the pre-show. We're getting comments here on YouTube. Roy Knight 96 says the fact that there's three matches on the pre-show is way too much. I do not disagree. These cards are way too long. Seven hours is crazy. Who wants to watch a seven-hour anything ever? Who wants to watch TV for seven hours straight? It's ridiculous. Who do they think wants to see this? Who do they think can sit through seven hours of wrestling? I'll tell you right off the bat. I'm not going to sit through the whole thing. I'm not going to see every match on this card, at least not uh, on Sunday, all in a row. I can't do that. If you're on the pre-show, I might not see your match. All right? That's basically what I'm saying. If you're on the pre-show, uh, I can sit through four hours. I could do seven to 11. I could do that. But, like, a three-hour pre-show is ridiculous. Or it's a two-hour pre-show, right? Yeah, it's a two-hour pre-show. But you're saying that the show's going to end at, what, midnight? At least probably past, I would think. I don't know if I can even handle that. So, like, in between from 7 to 11, like, when uh, when Dolph Ziggler wrestles uh, Seth Rollins for the Intercontinental title, I might be out of the room doing something else, you know? I can't be sitting and watching this whole thing. Even if you're watching the main card from 7 till, say, midnight, like you're saying, it says 11 on the network, but, like, usually they do push past 11. How are you going to sit through five hours of anything? Five hours, and it's not even like they're delivering a great, exciting card to keep me awake. Thank God for coffee. I don't know how I would do it, because we got to be up after the... SummerSlam to do a post show to recap the whole thing. I hope you can sit through the whole thing so you can fill in the gaps because I can't deal with it, man. It's too long. Well, we had experience in this. We've done this for a couple of years, and I usually get like a pre-workout energy drink to keep me awake through all this. That's the way I survive. You have your coffee. That's fine. I mean, but you have your methods. And think about it. WrestleMania, like how long was that? And I feel like the last two years, there was like a really good match. And then suddenly, wow, this is just so long and boring now. And then you go take a break. You go have a snack. You go, you know, 
No, I actually watched it all the way through, but I'm like, wow, the quality dipped. Like after the Ronda match, there was like a huge drop in just like me caring about what was going on in the show. I think when the Hardys came back too, it was just like that was amazing, and then everything else, not so much. That's why Nintendo Switch is so good, you know, because you could have the pay per view on the TV, and then we have the Switch here in front of us that we could play Mario Tennis during the boring matches, huh? Huh? I, I suppose that's an idea. We haven't done that ever, but that's we, an idea. We could. We could easily do that. I have done that in the past. You just haven't been here. Because I know John would start complaining if we're playing Mario Tennis instead of focusing on the pay per view. I'm trying to watch this here. Yeah, I would actually complain. You would complain. I would complain yeah. <laughs> a lot of complaining. So you're saying you don't want to play Mario Tennis during Dolph Ziggler, Seth Rollins? No, I, I actually want to watch that match. I want to see what's going to happen. Okay. Is Dean Ambrose going to cost Rollins the match? I mean, I think it might happen eventually, but I don't know if it's going to happen at SummerSlam. I don't care. I don't give a damn. I do not care. Is Dean Ambrose going to cost the match for Seth Rollins? And then what? We have Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins? Who the hell wants to see that ever again? I don't give a shit about that. I don't care. Fuck that. Who cares? I'm going to play Mario Tennis, man. I'm so sick of Dean Ambrose. And Seth. Dean Ambrose came back. I was like, whatever. That was like one of the first like DMs I got. I was like, oh, Dean Ambrose is back. Like, What do you think is going to happen now? I'm like, I, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> People kept asking me, hey, when do you think Dean Ambrose is coming back? I was like, I don't know. I don't care. Who cares? I hope never. I don't know. He came back. He looks good. He's jacked. You know, he's got a haircut. Whoa, he's jacked in his shoulders. That's about it. His arms well, whatever. So he looks bigger than he was. He's no Lex Luger, that's for sure. Well, no, he's, well, no, he's no Lex Luger, but who is Lex Luger? I don't know if you want to be Lex Luger. Well, I just think jacked. I think Lex Luger. Dean Ambrose, I will never think jacked. Like, maybe how he was before, I guess, but oh god, not that jacked. Our man Derek John says Ambrose versus Rollins will happen at Mania. Yeah, great. Yeah, but that's so far away, though. Like, that's why I wouldn't do the turn right now. Antoinette says she loves Dean, big pop. Antoinette loves Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. I don't understand Antoinette's taste in wrestling. We've met Antoinette. I like you. You're a nice person. I don't understand your taste in wrestling. I don't get it. And uh, Michael Dupree says Dean is looking a lot cooler than he did before. He does look way cooler. I thought it was interesting, too, that Renee Young's first night on commentary is also the night that Dean Ambrose, her husband, comes back to Raw. But she didn't say anything. She stayed quiet the entire time. Do you notice that? Like, yeah, of course I noticed that. I was, like, waiting for her to say something. It was odd. It was very odd. And at one point during the broadcast, Renee said something. And then Corbin said something to Renee, and Renee, like... Told him, like, get out of here, man. What are you talking about? You know, like Corbin said something that Renee didn't like. Okay. And then Renee and Corbin went quiet for a while. Like there was no commentary. And I feel like Vince McMahon was yelling in their their ears saying something because it was oddly quiet. You know, like it was like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Corey Graves. Did I say Corbin? You said Corbin. Yeah, I meant Corey Graves. Right. Graves says something to Renee. And then Renee is like, get out of here, man. And then they go quiet. And it's like, oh, what, what's going on there? It was weird. Her commentary was uh, okay. I didn't think it was terrible. Yeah, I don't know if they wanted her arguing, though. That was the thing. They didn't want to turn into how it usually is on Raw. I think they were tr doing their best to get Renee over because she's more likely to do commentary for the whole Evolution pay-per-view. So they're just getting her warmed up? Pretty much. But I don't think they wanted to build anything with her and Corey Graves because that's not going to go anywhere. Where, where a coach and Graves, that's a weekly thing. Yeah, that's possible. I don't know. I just, uh, you know, overall, I'm not that impressed with commentary. So her stepping in, it didn't really, uh, I don't know. It, she wasn't terrible. I thought she was all right. I thought she was better than the coach, to be quite honest. I, I found, like, she just had snippets here and there. Coach, I find he's more elaborate with his points, although sometimes his points are, like, completely in left field. I'm like, where yeah. the hell are you talking about? Now, Coach is really bad. Coach is really bad. And Michael Dupree saying here he'd rather have Renee than Coach. I agree. I agree. I uh, didn't, you know, I'm uh, not a huge Renee fan, but I think she's way better than Coach. Yeah, there's not uh, a lot of great commentators, so. I, I'd actually just take Coach just because I'm more familiar with Coach and, like, I'm more used to that. Renee, 
like I don't think it was that bad, but it's clearly that she was being protected and like she could only say certain things at certain times. Like I feel with coach, like they they don't mind like him embarrassing himself. They actually make fun of him for embarrassing himself. I guess it doesn't make for great commentary though, when he's embarrassingly bad, you know. Yeah, but who who isn't bad? Like they've all been terrible. You know, Otunga was horrible too. Booker T was good though. Booker was good. McFoley was good. I like Lawler, but a lot of people don't like Jerry Lawler on commentary. We were talking on the show last week. We thought Colt Cabana would be really good on commentary, but they're not going to hire him. No. But he'll be at All In, though. There you go. We will not. No, we won't. But hopefully we'll be watching. You're not booked in that Battle Royal? No, I'm not. Colt is booked in that Battle Royal. Is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, nice. It's going to be a good show. You going to watch that with me? You you get it here on pay-per-view? We get it in Canada? Like, I'll get it. I'll figure out a way. Wow. I got New Japan World, brother. I'll figure something out. <laughs> All right? If you have New Japan World, it's your ticket to everything. You figure it out. It's not going to be on New Japan World, but I'll figure something out. You have a little bit of break now after the G1, so. Woo! Did you hear the latest episode of What's Phantom in Japan? You know, I'm impressed. Like, it was only like 46 minutes. I was like, man, this is going to be well over an hour, I think I told you last week, but. No, you guys kept it condensed. I mean, obviously, you didn't talk about everything, but I think you talked about a good chunk of it. Like, I got a good idea of it, for sure. Yeah. Well, it was hard to talk about everything because it was 90 matches, right? Right. So, even to cover 90 matches in, like, an hour is crazy. So, we covered what we could. You know, we covered kind of the stories of uh, the different guys in the G1. Tanahashi, quite a story for the ace of New Japan winning the G1. Uh yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad we get a little bit of a break. I think next year for the G1, like this was my first G1, like covering it and really paying attention. Mm-hmm. And it was for the Phantom too. So I think next year we'll do more than one show during the G1. You know, like we'll do okay. a couple, couple shows throughout the G1. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it was good. And a little break from New Japan now until September, which is nice because like. It was a lot during the G1. I was watching a lot of wrestling. Now I get to kind of catch up on other things that I'm watching. I did get to watch uh, 205 Live this week to kind of get me hyped up for Cedric Alexander, Drew Gulak, kind of get a better understanding of that match going into this. I, I don't find it really helped me too much in terms of getting more hype for it, but it, it's good to see some quality wrestling. Like 205 Live, there's still some really great talent there that we don't get to see, unfortunately. Again, the time slot, that's the huge problem with 205 Live. After SmackDown, you don't really want to watch wrestling after that. No, I'm good after SmackDown. After Raw and SmackDown, I'm like, that's enough. I wonder, though, like when SmackDown goes to Fridays, what's going to happen to 205? Because it's live, right? But there's no actual SmackDown on Tuesday. So what's going to happen? Is it going to air? Is it still going to air on Fridays, too? That's going to be rough. I. I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do when they switch SmackDown over to Friday nights, which is not until October of 2019. So it's not even, it's a long way away. But they really need to look at this time slot and realize, like, this is the problem. I think you have a lot of great talent that's not being exposed right, in my opinion, whatsoever. The fact that the Cruiserweights aren't on Raw and SmackDown, I mean, maybe there's a little advertisement for, like, this is coming up on 205, but that's not enough. Whatever happened to the Cruiserweights on Raw? I guess to keep them exclusive, because I understand putting them on Raw, it felt like it was disjointed. Like, they just had these matches, but they meant nothing. Except when Enzo was around, but now you don't have Enzo, so it just felt disjointed again. It's just matches, but there was no rhyme or reason to them. They were just matches. So I, I get why you'd separate it, but people still don't care. I don't care. Yeah, this is a huge problem. And like, like I, I was telling you just before we started the show, I was like, uh... Who's a cruiserweight champion again? Is it Cedric Alexander? And I guessed right. And then I was like, uh, who's he wrestling? And I was like, is it Mustafa Ali? You were like, nope. I was like, is it uh, Drew Gulak? You were like, yep. I was like, oh, okay. I don't care. It's on the pre-show. I probably won't ever see that match. I'll tell you straight up. I probably will never see that match. It's a shame, too, because Mustafa Ali against uh, Dale Tommy. Fantastic. Yeah. What an incredible match. I'm sure. Like, the last time I saw 205 Live was probably when I was there live in person at the Bell Center watching it after SmackDown. And I was entertained. 
but I just don't have time for it, and it just doesn't matter. I feel like WWE doesn't put in that much effort into it, so why should I? Well, again, the time slot. They really need to fix it. Either put it before NXT or after NXT or even on the Thursday. Something else. Like, I think the live aspect isn't really that important because people aren't tuning in anyways. I agree. I don't know. They got to do something about 205 Live. It doesn't seem to be working, though. Um, I'm seeing Antoinette and uh, Wally and and some other people here on the YouTube chat talking about NXT coming up on Saturday, the TakeOver show. Yeah, it's going to be good. I mean, TakeOver is usually better than SummerSlam, right? It's usually better than the actual pay-per-view. Yeah, I could see the wrestling on that show being really top-notch. I'm going to watch that show on Saturday night. Mike Mike Dupree says 205 Live needs to end, and the roster needs to be fully part of Raw. Maybe. Yeah, but there's already people on Raw that aren't being used at all. And now you're going to add a whole new roster to Raw? So it's overkill, though. Uh, even though Raw is three hours, like you, you'll need four hours to cover everybody, and that's way too much already. Yeah, it is way too much. This is the problem. Like they have too many shows, and they just don't have the right way of featuring everybody. Yeah, I don't know how to save two hundred five live. I think putting them on Raw does help, but like I was saying before, they would put the big matches on two hundred five live and the kind of build up matches on Raw. But they should have put the big matches on Raw and feature them there. They've done a lot of things wrong with 205 Live. It's and now bad. that it's kind of on their own, it's like, man, they're on an island. You either tune in or you don't. Half the arena leaves before the show even starts. And no one's watching it on the WWE Network. I mean, maybe they are. WWE doesn't really tell us who's watching what, but... I can't imagine a lot of people are watching that show. So it's a shame. It's a lot like how the the new ECW was, where just they kind of left it alone to itself. They put it on SmackDown a little bit to try to save it, but yeah, they left it alone to itself until it eventually died. You know, um, that, I feel like that's going to happen to a five, which is a true shame because there's a some great talent there, some of the best talent actually in all of WWE. Yeah, there's a lot of talented wrestlers, but they're just not featuring them correctly. Uh, Michael says, stop giving people like Mojo, Bobby Roode, and Baron Corbin spots and start giving them to Hideo, Mustafa Ali, and Buddy Murphy. I don't disagree with that. Problem is that WWE doesn't agree with you. That's the problem. Yeah, WWE doesn't see it that way, but I, I, I agree with that 100%. Wally wants an NXT TakeOver post-show. I don't know about that. We'll definitely be back here on YouTube for a SummerSlam post-show. I'll be here and Big Johnny will be here right after SummerSlam to talk about Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns and the Universal Championship and maybe Kevin Owens, the new Universal Champion. Maybe we'll be having a party. Maybe we'll be celebrating our guy, Kevin Owens, as the new Universal Champion on Sunday night. How awesome would that be? We should have some meat then. If that's the case. Definitely some meat. Yeah, you bring over some steaks, all right? I'll grill them for you. Well, Goober, what? come on, what's going on here, Goober? What's your problem? <laughs> what's Goober? I don't understand the reference. It's, it's an old episode. It's okay. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Whatever. Um. So what about this TakeOver Brooklyn show? We're not going to have time to talk about it on Wrestling Uncensored proper, so we should get to it here, Johnny. Uh, well, Shayna Baszler and Kyrie Sane for the NXT Women's Championship. That'll be fun. I'm excited about that. And usually it's the women's title that I'm uh, most interested in in these takeover shows, and that hasn't really changed. That's the match I want to see. Yeah, but she's not going to lose, though. I mean, they haven't gave Ronda her championship yet. And you imagine, I think they've already announced it, too, the NXT Women's Championship will be defended at Evolution. Shane Baszler is going to easily defend, for sure. Why? And Ronda as well, because they're going to want that, that they're the champions. Ronda and Shane Baszler at the same time. I don't think you need that. It's uh, not necessary. I think, I think they like that. There's two champions at the same gimmick, brother. Yeah, and they're friends. I think they love that a lot. The pitchers and all that, they're going to love that. I could see Kyrie Sane being the one. She should be, I think. I can't think of anyone else who should beat her. But And then you set up a feud with Ronda down the road. Hey, I beat your girl Shayna. 
And now here I am at Women's Evolution. I'm defending my title. You're defending your title. The picture's there. And the hype for down the road when Kyrie comes in, how about that? I mean, that works just as well as your theory. Yeah, but they don't usually do the NXT crossover. It's very rare we see that anymore. You're talking about it? Yeah, just because it's Shayna Baszler. That's it. Nah. They'll, they'll, for Ronda, they'll do everything, but for like feuds like that? So you're convinced that Shayna wins and Kyrie is not going to win the title here? Yeah. I'm not convinced. I'm looking forward to the match. I think it's going to be really good. Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano for the NXT title in a last man standing match. I know that will be very good. I it, know it. It's a shame it's not a three-way like it was originally supposed to be because Alistair Black got injured. But, I mean, you're still going to get a great match out of it. I feel like Tommaso was going to retain anyways. So, obviously, I think Tommaso's still going to win. Michael says uh, Shayna and Ronda don't exactly have the same gimmicks. They're both MMA, but Shayna's like a mean bully and Ronda's like a superhero. Yeah, I understand that, but, you know. From a general perspective, you kind of see them as former MMA fighters, and they both talk about that as part of their gimmick quite a bit, right? Well, that's like you're saying Brock and Bobby are kind of the same, right? I mean, just because they're MMA fighters, but they're not portrayed the same way. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, who do you think is going to win here between Ciampa and Gargano? I think Ciampa retains the NXT title. Yeah, well, again, like he was supposed to retain, I think, in the three-way. I think... Gargano and uh, Black are going to cha- cancel each other out, but Ciampa is going to retain. And Alistair Black is hurt, so it's not a triple threat. It's just Ciampa and Gargano one-on-one, which is a little bit disappointing because we have seen it on a lot of these takeovers, uh, and I think the addition of Alistair Black would have made it more interesting. Yeah, I was more interested in that, but I mean, it's, you're still going to get a good match. It's not going to be bad. Adam Cole and Ricochet is going to be a good match, too. And, you know, uh, those four guys are really going to be competing against each other to steal the show. Cole versus Ricochet and Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. uh, Those four guys are going to go through hell to try and steal that show on Saturday night. I like it, man. I don't know. I I don't know who's going to win between Cole and Ricochet, but I can bet that it's going to be an incredible match. Ricochet is one of the most talented guys in the entire world. Yeah, I think Ricochet is going to win this one. They haven't really pushed him that hard yet, and I feel like this is the start of it. Anthony Plescia says he's looking forward to EC3 versus Velveteen Dream. Uh, Antoinette says she thinks Gargano will win. What do you think about that Velveteen Dream EC3 match? I like it, man. I think both those guys have great characters. I'm a big fan of uh, both guys. Velveteen Dream is incredible. The character, the promos, the look, everything he does, very impressive, man. I really like his entrances at these takeovers. He's a special talent. I hope he's able to go up to the main roster and be treated seriously and not like a joke, you know? I could see him go in the way of Tyler Breeze where, like, You know, in NXT, Tyler Breeze was treated pretty seriously as a character. He wrestled in main events and, you know, he won matches. But on the main roster, I mean, he was uh, Baron Corbin's choice on Raw for his opponent, right? Which was kind of a joke. He's like, oh, let me choose somebody easy. Oh, I'll just take Tyler Breeze. And I don't want to see Velveteen Dream go the same way, although I could see it. Look at Asuka, where she is compared to what she was on NXT or many others. So I do like Velveteen Dream, but I fear for his future because a gimmick like that, it could work on the main roster, but I don't know if it will necessarily. Well, where you fear for him, I don't fear for EC3. I think EC3, if he's used on the main roster at all, it has to be serious because he just he brings that kind of personality to the table. And I'm surprised he's not the heel in this situation. To me, he he's more of the, the jerk. But apparently Velting dreams the heel in all this. Yeah, is he though? I think people just like them both. I, I actually think Velveteen Dream is actually more beloved than EC3. I think people don't like the cockiness of EC3 so much as they just love how entertaining Velveteen Dream is. 
Anthony says EC3 is a better personality and newer version of John Cena. It's high praise. I don't, I don't know if he'll have the same career. I don't know of the John Cena comparison. I don't really see that, but. Antoinette says Asuka has been deleted. Yeah. Well, so has Nia Jax in a sense, right? Asuka's not booked at SummerSlam, right? Well, so is not Nia Jax. Sasha Banks, Bailey. You know, that was a big thing that was going on that's not even on the big pay-per-view. Just yeah. goes to show you there's a lot of talent in WWE still not on the big show. And not that many women's matches on this card. There are two and a half women's matches on this 13-match card. Talking about the mixed tag is the half, I guess, right? Yeah, well, Rusev and Lana against Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega on the pre-show. I mean, half that match is women, right? So two and a half. You have the two title matches. You have, um, right, Ronda Rousey against Alexa Bliss and then Carmella against Becky Lynch against Charlotte Flair in the triple threat for the SmackDown title, and that's it. Well, maybe they're saving a lot of feuds and storylines for the pay-per-view. Evolution is kind of coming up in a sense. I mean, they have one pay-per-view after SummerSlam, and then you're going to have the women's pay-per-view really quickly. I don't know. I'm still surprised that they're only doing two matches. I I don't complain when there's less matches. The fact that uh, we don't have the leader of worlds on the pay-per-view, I don't complain. I mean, it sucks for them, but there's one less thing I have to worry about on this pay-per-view to watch. I suppose. Well, is there any women's match you're dying to see right now? Uh, that's not already booked? No, not really. I, I mean, they could throw uh, Sasha and Bailey against uh, Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan on this one. Oh, yeah, I'm dying for that. Absolutely dying to see that again know. and again and again. Yeah. Well, how about Asuka? How about Asuka versus somebody in a number one contenders match? See, this is the problem. You pretty much put all your number one contenders, your top stars, already in one match. There's where's, no one for Asuka to face. Where's Naomi? Yeah, nowhere. Where's Naomi? When's the last time we saw Naomi? How come it's not Asuka versus Naomi? I want to see that. It's a good match. Number one contender. Put that on the card instead of... Let's see, Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin for the millionth time? Just scratch that. I don't want to see that. I, I like Finn Balor. I'm a big fan. I don't need to see him wrestle Baron Corbin ever again. As much as you don't like it, they're really pushing the crap out of Baron uh, it's Corbin. terrible. He's awful. But he's one of the top guys on Raw when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's maybe the top heel on Raw. He's up there for sure. Well, question. who's the top heel on Raw? Well, Brock, I guess, right? Yeah, well, he's not really on Raw. Dolph's up there, too. Kevin Owens. Yeah, Kevin's up there, too. Is Kevin the top heel on Raw, or is it Baron Corbin? Probably Baron more than Kevin. That's rough. Yeah. So if Roman Reigns wins the title at SummerSlam, Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin for the September pay-per-view for the Universal title? No, actually, I could see Kevin because Baron would make the match, right? Oh, I hope so. (laughs) At least. At least we would get that, hopefully. Oh, boy. You watched 90 Day Fiance this week? No, I couldn't find it, unfortunately. Oh, man. Anybody watch 90 Day Fiance? You see that guy go to Columbia? That girl's not showing up. She's just not showing up. Well, she didn't look real, so I'm not surprised. She wasn't real. He was catfished. What an idiot, that guy. Well, that ends the story, then. I guess he's done. Yeah, that's it. You're off 90 Day Fiance. (laughs) Get out of here, dude. And, uh, yeah, that lady traveled to England. I'm getting annoyed with that lady and that guy. Antoinette says she watched it. She says she's fake, she told me. I know. I know. Wally says he saw the first part of the panel episode in Ireland. They're a little bit behind. Did you enjoy the uh, the finale panel there, Wally? <laughs> I thought the the latest episode of 90 Day Fiance was pretty good. Uh, The one lady from uh, the States, I don't know where she's from, Georgia or something. She's traveling to Nigeria. 
and she didn't have all her documents. She didn't have her passport in time, so she had to delay her flight and spend all this money. And then you see the guy in Nigeria, and he's, like, talking to his friends, and he's like, she's not a grandmother. She's my future wife, but she is a grandmother, too. You know, his friends are kind of making fun of him because she's, like, 50-something, and he's, like, 30. It's uh, it's uh, It's odd. That one's odd. I don't think that's going to work out. And then, of course, Darcy and Jesse had another big fight. Uh, those two don't seem to like each other at all. I don't understand why they keep trying to stay together. Darcy doesn't seem to actually like Jesse in any way other than the way he looks. And Jesse doesn't seem to like Darcy in any way other than, um, you know, she gets him on TV in the United States. I think that's why Jesse likes Darcy. They are terrible together. They are terrible. Uh, they need to fix things. And, like, Jesse's like, uh, well, Darcy needs to fix herself and then maybe come back to me. And if she's better, then maybe I will accept her. It's like, what? Darcy's losing all this weight. She's, like, not even eating. They got into a fight at a restaurant. Darcy storms off. Jesse just sits there and eats his fish. She's just eating. And then she comes back and she doesn't eat. And then they're leaving the restaurant and Darcy's like, I'm starving. <laughs> She's, like, starving herself for this guy, and he does not care. It's not healthy. It's not good. It's bad for both of them. Yeah, it's fun to watch, though. They're good characters on 90 Day Fiance, I'll tell you that much. Can you leave now, John? This turned into the Dave Simon show. Like, you know when uh, I leave and you're like, oh, it's a Johnny North show. Just get out of here. Yeah, it's I'm just me. stay here too bad. It's just me now because you're, you're not up on 90 Day Fiance. Antoinette says, Jesse's not worth it. I agree. He's not worth it. Darcy, you need to find yourself a better guy. Somebody who will uh, like you <laughs> for who you are and not like try and change you constantly and who will never be satisfied with you. Seriously, it's bad. And he's like 24 years old. What does he know? Darcy is like 40-something and he's like 24. Why are you listening to a 24-year-old dude tell you anything? When you're in your 40s, you shouldn't listen to 24-year-old people that think they know better than you because they don't. I think some people just need someone to hold on to and so just grasp onto whatever they can get. Well, they need to uh they need to do better for themselves. Some some of them can't though. They can. They just believe that they can't, John. Right, they're psychologically damaged, so Well, sure, but they need to uh Get a hold of themselves and uh, get it together. And you get to watch it all as they exploit it on TV. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Well, they're paid for it, so whatever. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, Antoinette says some people just don't want to be alone, and I think that's kind of a deal with Darcy. But I can't imagine that Darcy, uh, like, really can't find anybody other than this Jesse character. Like, is this guy really the best guy that she can find? Like, maybe he is the youngest and most handsome, although I find him kind of weird looking. I don't know. Have you seen Jesse? Is Jesse handsome? I can't remember. I only saw him from a glance one time. Whatever. One episode. He's like a Dutch guy. I don't know. I don't, you know, Darcy just needs to get it together. All right? Get your act together, Darcy. I don't think she will because she's a bit, uh, you know. Whatever. All right, I think we're done. We're done. We wrap it up with 90 Day Fiance. We talked a lot about WWE and SummerSlam on this, which is rare. Usually we're we're more talking about other things, but there's so much going on in wrestling. You want to talk about Randy Orton's penis? I'd rather not. <laughs> well, apparently Randy Orton touches his penis and then uh, tells people to shake his hand. And he's been doing that for years, and it's like a well-known fact. And all these people are saying it now that Randy Orton touched his penis and then tried to shake their hand. Apparently, he would do it to all of the writers for WWE. And now WWE says they're investigating the matter. We've heard stories about Randy Orton being inappropriate for years. Years. Well, this is what happens when you hire someone really young. And you just let him run wild pretty much. You pretty much give him a huge push, make him seem like he's one of the top stars, and like 
John Cena ever do this? John Cena wasn't as young, though. I think Randy was like... Brock no. Lesnar ever do this? Brock did go AWOL. What do you mean? He, like, left the company. just like, I'm done. Randy, that's not AWOL. AWOL is a military term for wow. when you disappear from your post in the military. Brock was never in the military who went AWOL. Randy Orton was in the military and went AWOL, Johnny North. That's a fact. Again, really young. Randy. And also, Randy Orton touches his penis and tells you to shake his hand. And then when you refuse to shake his hand because you saw what he just did, he's like, oh, what? You're not going to shake my hand? I'm Randy Orton. You want me to go tell Vince and Stephanie and Triple H you won't shake Randy Orton's hand? Intimidating people, bullying people at work. This is the kind of thing that Randy Orton apparently, allegedly, is doing. I believe that he probably is. That's my guess. Okay, you got to really rework the way you're wording this here. Is and was. He did do this. You believe he did do this. Is still doing. I don't believe he still is doing. You don't believe that. Maybe not. But the fact that he did a lot of these things, there there are rumors that he uh, defecated in a bag of one of the female talents. It was JBL's secretary, I think. Was it? I don't know who he did it to, but there are uh, rumors and, and even just things that Randy has admitted to himself over the years. Randy Orton has, you know, done some bad things for a while. And it seems like they're catching up to him. And the WWE has a choice now whether to take it seriously and get rid of Randy Orton or turn a blind eye like they have been for his entire career, continue to employ him and push him as one of your main event stars. I think that they'll do that. I think that they're going to turn a blind eye like they always have to Randy Orton and they're just going to allow him to go on and do whatever the hell he wants. Let's remember Randy Orton was going to fail the wellness like three times and they fired him and then rehired him. So then they wouldn't have to release him for the wellness failure. So they protect Randy Orton. He's not Enzo Amore here. Randy Orton is one of the most protected guys in the history of the WWE. He's done more things and been saved by the WWE more times than anyone I can remember. You're telling me Triple H didn't know Randy Orton was doing all this stuff the whole time? When Triple H is hanging with Randy and, and spending all this time with Randy, you're telling me Triple H himself is not aware of a lot of inappropriate behavior that Randy Orton has exhibited in the workplace? Remember, Come on. They did a doc on this, remember? Yeah. And Triple H himself said, eh, I couldn't take Randy. Uh, he was doing bad things. Uh, I had to sit him down many times and give him talking to the... And they'd rather the talkings than firing them. Randy, you can't do this, uh Randy, you need to keep your penis in your pants, uh. We can't afford to keep paying people off, uh. I mean, Randy Orton's not the only guy to expose himself in the professional wrestling business, right? We've heard stories about the nature boy Ric Flair wearing his robe. And then whipping it off. I mean, that's been confirmed in front of flight attendants, in front of all sorts of different people. Not doing that now, but he did do it in the past. And it's a different time right now. We're in a time where uh, if you did something 15, 20 years ago, you can be held accountable for it now. When maybe you weren't held accountable in the past, and maybe you should have been. So we'll see if the WWE is going to hold Randy accountable here, but... I'm not sure they will. I really don't think they will. Your bet? Anything happen to Randy or will Randy be at SummerSlam? Well, he's not wrestling, which is somewhat surprising. I thought they were going to make it a three-way with Nakamura and Jeff Hardy, but I guess the plan was never for Randy to ever wrestle in that match at all. I think it was just for Randy to be in the shadows, and like he's probably going to cost Jeff the match. Yeah, RKO, big pop for Randy, right? Or I guess he's not doing that anymore. Yeah, I don't think it'll be an RKO. You're going to think it's an RKO, but it'll do something else. Maybe a kick in the nuts or something. That seems yeah. to be the story of this match. He'll just cause a disqualification to whatever. Wally wants me to do an impression of what Vince would say to Randy. You want to do that before we wrap up this show? We'll wrap it up with that, I guess, yeah. 
Rent. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's harder when like you're getting prepped for it. Like, yeah, that's when you, it. When you just do it off, you know, Willy usually Nelly, it's, it's spontaneous. Yeah. You know, it's harder when I have to kind of when when it's a request for Randy. Do you want to play Randy? I can't think of Randy how Randy would talk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, either. Randy, quite frankly, I can't have you pulling your penis out and exposing it. Uh, that's it. That's pretty much all I got. Randy, your penis needs to stay in your pants, damn it. That's all I got. All right, guys. It's Wally's birthday. He wants 20 more minutes. Is it really your birthday, Wally, or are you just saying that to get 20 more minutes of show? Just listen to uh, What's Phantom in Japan again. You can listen to that at WrestlingUncensored.net. And uh, Ringside Report tonight, we're going to have a very special show with the one, the only, James Boom Boom Mancini. He's going to be back in studio with us. Fred will be there. AJ will be there tonight, midnight Eastern on TSN 690. We will be live. With the in-studio guest, James Boom Boom Mancini. Cool. It's going to be good, man. We're always delivering more content. And then, of course, you know, you can listen to uh, Wrestling Uncensored when that show comes out, which will be tomorrow night, right? Get you set for SummerSlam. How about that? Get you all set. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you for uh, all the comments. Uh, Shout out to Wally, of course, my man. Shout out to you, Wally. Thank you for everything that you do for the Wrestling Uncensored Ringside Report Radio Universe. Antoinette. Antoinette says she's going to be back in Montreal soon. Stop into the studio, Antoinette. You are always welcome. As are all of you here. Mike Dupree, Anthony Plessia, Antonio Bam Bam, Peter Galanopoulos. Uh, Man, there's a lot to name here. I'm trying to... Roy Knight... Uh, Derek John, I saw you, my man. A lot of people out there. I'm trying to get to everybody. If I missed you, you know, thank you, everybody, for watching and commenting. I'm Dave. This is Johnny. This has been Dave and Johnny Live. Episode 2. Episode 2. 2.